Hi friends, it's Terry Gaines. In this video, I'm going to share three mini Slimline Fun Fold cards with you. Before I share the cards, I wanna talk about the product I use to decorate the cards. I use the Petal Park Stamp Set by Stampin' Up! and the Coordinating Punch. Love this stamp set. You get some outline images that you can stamp and color in the images. You get bold images that you can stamp. Both you can stamp with color ink and makes beautiful projects or you can use the two together. I'm going to show you some tips on doing that. The punch will punch out the three flowers. They are all on one stamp, and then you have a leaf it will also punch out. So, so versatile with that stamp set. The sentiments are from the Layering Leaves stamp set. I've used these sentiments for my cards. I'm also using the Nested Essential Dies for the cards. For the embellishments, I'm going to be using the Iridescent um, Pastel Gems. These three colors work perfect for the three colors I'm using for my ink pad colors and my cardstock colors. And I picked the cardstock and ink pad colors because I chose the Inked Botanical Designer Series paper for my projects. This is beautiful designer series paper. You get 12 different double-sided prints and they've got a beautiful background on one side and just some beautiful prints on the other side. They're six by six, you get four each and 48 in the package. And as I mentioned, I chose these colors because they go with that designer series paper. And that's the color of the ink pads I'm going to be using for my projects. So when I use the stamp set, I wanna give you some tips on that. So I've already stamped the detail images and I stamped the detail in Lost Lagoon and then Crushed Curry for the floral images. Now I wanna show you how I would use the bold images to stamp this in. The beauty of this is you only need one color of your green. I'm gonna use Lost, La Lost Lagoon. And with photopolymer stamps, I typically just let them relax on the table and then I pick up the stamp with the block. But this particular one just has a little bit more flexibility. I would suggest that you stamp your detail image, then lay this a clean stamp. You wanna make sure it's clean and then lay it down to overlay your detail part of this stamp just because it's got that flexibility. Then you can come in here, pick this up. Now you have it in the right orientation. So with one ink pad color, you would, whoops, you would stamp this one directly on your paper. The deep or the bold part, you would stamp on your, you would ink up your stamp, stamp on your scratch paper to get some of the ink off. And then what you can do is bring this to your project paper and you are going to get a lighter shade of that color and it will be perfect for two-step stamping. So put even pressure down, give it time to absorb into your cardstock. And now you have that detail stamped in with that second color. This is a perfect way to get a light and dark color that coordinate. I'm gonna do the same thing with the floor, the bold flower. For this one, just let it relax on the table. Pick up your stamp with the block. I'm going to use Crush Curry. I already used Crush Curry for the detail part, so I'm going to do this again. And now I'm going to stamp this off. Now I'm stamping on some scratch paper here, and I'm being intentional about where I stamp because I'm going to repurpose this scratch paper. So I'll show you that further in the video. Now what I can do is bring this overlay it onto this flower that's already stamped. Give it some even pressure and time to absorb into your paper. And now you have the two shades for your floral stamp. Perfect way to use your images here. Now, the other thing, did you know a pencil eraser can be used as a stamp? I'm going to use the Calypso Coral, tap my eraser into the ink pad, and then use that to stamp the center of those flowers. So that's a perfect way to get your color in the center of those flowers. Now I'm going to give you one more tip about this um, stamp set and the punch. 
we have the punch here that not only will it punch out the flowers, but it will punch out this leaf. If you're going to punch out the leaf, you can cut your strip to be three quarters of an inch. Then I'm gonna suggest that you come in here and punch one leaf first. The reason I do that is because now when I go to stamp my leaf, now I know what rotation to stamp it in. And if I stamp it in that rotation, then I can come in here and easily line it up to punch out the leaf. Otherwise, I'm twisting and turning this, trying to get that to line up. So if you punch it first, then you know the orientation to punch, to stamp that. So those are the tips I have. Now we're gonna go right into creating or sharing the three fun fold cards. I'm gonna bring in a stack of items here and see if I get everything on the video. I wanna make sure that I show all of my projects here. And I mentioned I'm going to share three mini fun fold cards with you. Mini slimline fun fold. Well, mini slimline card is six inches by three and a half. This will take your, you can get one card base for an eight and a, out of an eight and a half by 11 card stock. I'm gonna show you how to make some fun fold cards that you can get two card bases out of each of those um, eight and a half by 11. So I have a template that you can download from my blog. There'll be a direct link in the text portion of this video if you found me via YouTube. So slimline card number one. We're going to cut at three and a half inches and at three and a half inches. So your card base is gonna be three and a half by eight and a half and you're gonna score it at two and a half and you will get two of those out of that card base. So I've pre-cut and pre-scored those. Then you're going to get this extra piece. This extra piece is how you can embellish the card. So for this particular card here, I have that card base. I use the colors I shared already. I use the nested essential dies. And when I decorate these cards, I decorate the, this layer first then I put this designer series paper down because then I can line it up to be equal spaces. And then I will bring this down because now I, wherever I place this, I'm going to make sure that that top portion covers it up. There's a, also the scenario where you don't want exposed adhesive here. So my tip to do this card would be to bring in some dimensionals take two dimensionals and where I'm placing them is in this area because I know I'm going to cover that area up. Then I'm going to look at this. I'm going to flip this over on this side. I'm going to put a dimensional here and a dimensional here. Now when I take the backings off and place this on my card front, I know that all I need to do is look for equal spacing on the top and bottom, look for where I want it oriented in that direction, and then I can place it down and I won't have exposed adhesive. So I use the um, Lost Lagoon Crushed Curry and Stamped and Punched, and I have the um, sentiments, and this is all the product I shared with you earlier that I used on this one. Now this card is oriented this way. You can rotate your card and have it this direction. And I would stamp and decorate the inside. Now I've added a few extra layers to this card. And when you create this top panel, just make sure it's larger than the inside panel. I used adhesive instead of dimensional, but I used the same scenario. And here I use the colors I shared and Lost Lagoon and Crushed Curry and added some embellishments. Now these extra panels are from this extra piece. Now if you take this extra piece, cut it in half this way and score it in half that way, you will get two of them that you can create this extra little card on the inside. And I've used all the same product. So this is all the same product decorating these three cards. So that's fun fold number one. For fun fold card number two, 
we're going to get two card bases from this card. And in this case, we're going to cut your cardstock at six inches this way, then at five and a half this way, and then you're going to score both of those at two inches. So your card base is going to be like this. Now this bottom is your extra pieces. You can cut that to be panels on the outside and a variety of different ways. I'll share that in a moment. As I mentioned, I'll provide this on my blog. Now this first card I use this panel is that inside layer and I have some extra layers here. I did the same thing. I decorated the inside first, put my adhesive um, the same way I did earlier and showed you so you don't get your exposed adhesive. And just make sure this outside panel is slightly larger than the inside panel. And then this is stamps, paper, and ink. For this card, I brought in the punch and decorated a little bit with the punch. So what I did for this card is this extra piece I cut in half so I can get two of them. Then I scored that, folded that in half. So this is one half of that extra piece and I made a little card. So you have fun fold number two in this fashion or this fashion, or you can rotate it like this. And here I brought in the nested essential dies. Again, make the inside one smaller, the outside one larger, decorate the inside first, and then decorate the outside. So that's fun fold number two. For the third fun fold, um, what I did was I cut my cardstock three and a half inches and capped it the 11. You can get two of those with a smaller strip for your extra and then score it at five inches. With a card base like that, when you score it at five inches, you're going to get a card that you have a little opening here. So what I did was I put a one inch, I put the fairy vanilla down first and a one inch strip over that. And that is perfect to just cover that up. I used the nested essential dies and the Lost Lagoon and the um, flower punch. These leaves are right from the designer series paper. And for this card, I have you have the option to rotate your card this way or this way. And for this card, you can decorate the inside and have your sentiment like this. So nested essential dies are also used on that one. So those are three fun fold cards that I wanted to share with you. Now you're probably wondering, well, how are, what kind of envelopes am I gonna use for your cards? Well, I shared with you that when we stamped this piece, and I actually think I stamped this one over here earlier, um, what we did is um, stamp that intentionally. I stamped that on a piece of grid paper that is nine and a quarter by eight inches. I'm going to use that for an envelope. I cut a template and the, I used the cardboard cardstock that's in the back of the designer series paper, the 12 by 12 paper, so it's a little bit um, thicker. And I cut this at six and a half by three and five eighths. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and this is gonna be the opening. So I'm gonna turn this upside down. I'm gonna place it equal spacing in this direction. Let me move this stuff out of the way. So I'm going to move this um, equal spacing this way and this way. And on this side, I'm going to have about three quarters of an inch. Then I'm going to take and just fold this up like this. I'm gonna fold this piece like this. Now, when you use a lightweight paper like this, this is our grid paper that we sell in the annual catalog. If you use a lightweight paper, you don't have to score it. You can just use your fingers. Now, if you're using designer series paper, you're gonna use a lot of designer series paper and you'd have to score this. I think grid paper or scratch paper works perfect. So once you fold those, that's giving you basically the template to know where to cut for your envelope. So what I'm going to do is I'm cutting each of these corners out. And what I choose to do is just go on a slight angle. So I'm actually doing just a slight angle, cutting off, off the 
fold or that score line. So I'm going to cut all four of these corners out and I'm going to do something before I cut this one out. We need a way to seal the envelope. So what I'm going to do before I cut this other section is take some, um, this is our tear and tape. I'm going to place some tear and tape across the bottom. What I like about tear and tape is you can tear it. That's the beauty of this. But what I like about using it for the envelope, so you can you have a, a um, backing on this and it keeps your adhesive ex covered until you're ready to expose it. So this way you can create an envelope that you don't peel this off until you're ready to use the envelope. So once you have your paper like this, I'm a little unorganized. I do want to tell you my videos are unedited. I don't go back in and change anything. Almost every one of my videos contains bloopers, but um, just bear with me. I'm gonna move everything out of the way so I can get back to a better view for the um, assembly of this. Now you're gonna choose, do I wanna see that portion if you have that ruler or do I wanna hide that? I'm gonna show that. I think that's kind of cool to have that. So all I'm gonna do is take my adhesive, run it down this area, close that up. I'm gonna take my adhesive, run it across here. And now I have an envelope that my fun fold card is going to fit into. So now you have an envelope that your fun fold card is gonna fit into and a pretty decorative flap and your front. So that is a fun way to create your envelopes. As I mentioned, you can download the um, PDF. And I also wanna share that Stampin' Up! and their online store has some beautiful decorative grid paper that also makes some beautiful um, envelopes. I hope you enjoyed these fun fold cards. I do have a PDF you can download from my blog that will show you a picture of the cards that I have created and shared on this video. They are also on my blog. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. If you are interested in stamping a product and you do not have a demonstrator, I would love you to reach out to me. And I hope you enjoyed this. Happy creating.